The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, so for number four, we're going to use our uh, economic principles uh, in a more of an application style question. So we have that the mall manager of a mall t-shirt stand, in a normal week, he would sell 40 t-shirts at a price of 18. So what's important to note is that that constitutes a coordinate point. Remember that your number of units is always the x. So at 40 units sold, the price was 18. The price is always going to be your y. So this is a coordinate point, 40, 18. When he reduced his price by 6, he sold 10 more. So we need to come up with another coordinate point that represents that. Well, he sold 10 more units, that would be 50. And that was when he reduced his price by 6, so now the price is 12 instead of 18. So we want to find, in part A, a linear model expressing this demand x as a function of p. So we want, for part A, we want x equals what? So let's figure out what this is. This is a linear function here. We have two points. We can figure out the slope. So remember that these are x, p. So our n here is 12 minus 18 over 50 minus 40, if you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we get negative 6 over 10, in other words, negative 3 fifths. So that's our slope, and our equation would look something like this, p equals negative 3 fifths x plus b. We don't know what our um, y-intercept is. But we have points we could use and plug in and we could figure that out, so let's do that real quick as well. Let's just use the first point. So if p is 18, that means our x is 40 plus b. So 40 over 5 would give you 8. So we have 18 equals negative 24 plus b. So that tells you that b is going to be 18 plus 24, so that's going to be 42. So this means then that our equation is p equals negative 3 fifths x plus 42. So the last thing we need to do is solve this in terms of x because your answer wanted x as a function of p instead of the other way around. So if we solve this for x, we're going to get p minus 42 equals negative 3 fifths x multiplied by negative 5 thirds to get rid of that. So we're going to get negative 5 thirds p plus, so 42 divided by 3 is going to be 14, 5 times 14 is going to be 70. So negative 5 thirds p plus 70 equals x is our final answer for letter A, x as a function of p. So for letter B, it says, one week the manager sold 58, find the price. And we can do that just using this function. So letter B says x equals 58. Remember, x is the number of things we sold. Um, and in one week he sold 58. So what was the price? We can use this function right here. So we get negative 5 thirds p plus 70 equals 58. Negative 5 thirds p equals, if we do 58 minus 70, we're going to get negative 12. Negatives cancel out. p is equal to 36 over 5. In other words, 7 and 1 fifth, which in dollars and cents would be $7.20. 1 fifth is 0.2. So that if he sold 58 t-shirts, that must mean that the price 
he had knocked down to seven dollars and twenty cents. So let me do part C then here. So part C, um, let me leave the function up because I think we're going to need that. Okay, so revenue is written as a function of price P. So remember that revenue is how many units you sell times the price that you sell them at. So part C here. Revenue is X times P. In other words, how many you sell and how much you're selling them for. If you multiply those together, that's how much money you made. We want it only in terms of P, but that's fine because we have this function Instead of x, we can write this in terms of p, and we'll get it all in terms of p. So let's do that now. So instead of x, we're going to write negative 5 thirds p plus 70 times p. And if we distribute that, we get negative 5 thirds p squared plus 70p. So this equation right here gives the re total revenue that the store would make if you put a selling price on the t-shirt. So if you knew this week you were going to sell t-shirts for $6, if you plug that in, this would give you how much money you would make that entire week. So just be careful on these problems, whether they're talking about X or P, and in which way you need to write your answer. Remember that when you're writing them as coordinate points, though, you always want X, the X coordinate, to be the number of units you always want the y coordinate to be the price. If you need to write something differently, like in this problem, it will tell you explicitly. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.